So once upon a time, there was this little boy, and every day he would walk to school, he would go past this brick wall, and he always wanted to see what was on the other side of it. So he would jump, but he couldn't, couldn't make it. Every day he would give it another shot, and he just couldn't get over the wall. It was too tall for him. He came up with this brilliant idea, however, and he um, walks up to the wall, and he takes off his hat, and he throws it over the wall. And then what do you know? His next attempt, he gets to the top and he gets to the other side of the wall. All it was for him was his circumstances changed, right? He went from, yeah, I kind of want to get over this wall to I must get over this wall because <laughs> I got to get my hat back. He always had it in him though. And when I think of me here at Ohio Woodburner and we're getting ready for this open house here, I just had some thoughts that I wanted to share with you. I get a lot of comments from people saying, Joe, you need to be a motivational speaker. And I appreciate those comments, but I just think, gosh, if I were a motivational speaker, I, I would have to have the address to the poor house. <laughs> I don't think I could do it. And I would be the only motivational speaker ever that was sponsored by a caffeine company. You know, I would probably put people to sleep. Never had I thought I would be a firewood delivery service. Never would I think I would be a motivational speaker. I remember in school, you know, when they would say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And everyone would want to be a doctor, a lawyer, a police officer, a firefighter. I always wanted to be a stand-up comedian. Why not? Every time I would tell people I wanted to be a stand-up comedian, they laughed at me. So here I am now, guys. I have a YouTube channel. I crack jokes. I guess I'm a comedian. And guess what? No one is laughing now. But the bottom line with motivational speaking, there's a couple things that I've always noticed. You know, there are these motivational speakers that are like these rah-rah type, you know. Uh, I had a high school football coach that was like that. And I mean, this guy who just had these fiery locky, locker room speeches. Uh, we had one of those chalkboards that was like on a easel and you could like flip it over and write on one side and flip it over and write on the other. He put his, he put his fist through that thing one time. <laughs> that was intense, man. But then there's those other motivational speakers. They're like intellectual. They have these brilliant plans, these 16 steps to a successful life. The four cornerstones of a uh, positive relationship with your spouse. The 27 tips to a great sales career. <laughs> oh, wow. So, and then they write books and they have these big auditoriums and everyone comes to see them. And then they have their books for sale out in the lobby. There was this one company I worked for, the CFO. I can't remember his title. He was a very nice guy, but he was like a bean counter. You know, he didn't have that human element to him. He couldn't relate to people. He came up with this plan. And <laughs> he called it the hedgehog. And I don't even know what the heck that means. But this thing, it was on a sheet of paper and it had this big triangle. And inside the triangle were all these other little triangles and they all had writing in them. And then there were arrows on the inside pointing out and there were arrows on the outside pointing in. And it had this big circle around it with all these other arrows showing the direction that it is going. I don't know what the heck it was. I know it was complicated. I know that if there was a message, <laughs> it was lost on me, man. You know, he lost me at the first triangle. What the heck? I don't know, guys. I'm from Ohio, and I've always said people from Ohio are practical, and I try to lead a practical lifestyle. <laughs> and I have certainly been on a learning experience with Ohio Woodburner, and I got into this seriously, not knowing anything that I was doing. I just got into it, and I've been figuring it out every step of the way. But that is what I have learned. And if I were to give a motivational speech to you guys, uh, my book wouldn't have a lot of pages in it. It would probably have it would probably have two pages in it. It would be it would be one of those pamphlets, <laughs> those trifold pamphlets that you get in the at the rest area on uh, on the highway. Uh, it, there's not a lot of um, secrets. There's not a lot of magic formulas. There's really nothing in it that I could tell you that would be anything earth shattering. But I have learned some valuable lessons in starting Ohio Woodburner. I mean, what the heck, I've gotten this far. And you know, we're sitting on the eve here of our, of our open house. I have learned two things starting Ohio Woodburner, and I wanna share them with you. 
the first thing that I have learned, the most important thing that you can do to start a business, to fix a relationship, to make self-improvement, the very first thing, get started. No, nothing magic there, guys. Very simple. Uh, it's a very simple message, but it's probably the most difficult step of your journey. Get started. And that's what I did. I have had, over my life, brilliant ideas. I could probably name off 10 business ideas that I've had. Multiple ideas on things that I felt could be a successful business. Uh, but guess what? I've only started one of them. I've only taken action on one of them. And that's Ohio Woodburner. And look where it's led me. You know, I had a comfortable desk job. I had a coffee cup. I had an office with a door on it. And I walked away from all of that for the great unknown. And here I am. But what is it that got me to where I am? One of the two things is I got started. I did something. I get a lot of phone calls from people asking me, Joe, I want to start a firewood business. What splitter should I use? You know, Joe, I'm thinking about starting a firewood business. How should I price my bundles? How should I price my cords? My message to you is it doesn't matter. You know, guys, I got started. That is the only difference between all my other brilliant ideas and Ohio wood burner. I took action. I still remember when I was in the planning phase of this, I was going to go visit my accountant. He does my taxes and he said that he would talk to me about what I need to do to get this thing started. I was on my way down to see him and I was driving by a printer and I stopped in because I was a little early and I was going to ask her because I had some files made with literature for my business. I um, wanted to see if I could get these printed up. And the meeting was a disaster. The lady was polite, but she uh, just made it clear. It was, you know, go away, little guy. Uh, come back when you get big is pretty much what she was telling me. And I still remember leaving there just dejected. I was like, oh, my God, <laughs> you know, this is this isn't going to work. Who am I fooling? Uh, you know, I'm just. I'm just Joe. I could never be successful at this. And I almost turned right when I left their parking lot instead of turning left and heading on down to the accountant. Almost. But I turned left, I went to the accountant, and it was a great meeting, and I left it energized. My point is, though, you get started. <laughs> just get started. File your paperwork with your state and get started. Get your vendor's license and then figure it out. All right? Yes, planning is important. Yes, knowing what you're wanting to do and how you're going to execute it. Yes, that's important, but I'm telling you guys how many people get wrapped up in this planning phase. And I would argue, and I'm not a professional psychologist, but I am an amateur psychologist. And I just have a sense that a lot of people use this planning as an excuse to not get started, right? I really do think if you're that little boy, throw your hat over the wall and get busy. So that is the first thing, get started. Now there's a second part to it and it is also important. And it is don't stop. Don't stop. If you've gotten started, then don't stop. And trust me, every step of the way there's going to be adversity. Your truck isn't gonna start. The phone isn't gonna ring. You can't find any product to sell. The weather is raining and you can't work in the rain. You got mud up to your knees. Every type of adversity is out there waiting for you. The objective is though, guys, you do not stop. You keep going. Your truck won't start, fix your truck. You have no product to sell, go find some product and get it sold. You can't get the loggers to show up to your yard to deliver logs, go find a logger and don't stop. Your phone isn't ringing, no one's buying your product. Go out and find people to buy your product. You don't stop. Guys, if you commit to not stopping, you can't be stopped. Nothing can defeat you. Just keep going and don't stop. You don't stop, you keep going forward and you keep going forward because you can. Guys, this is the hidden message and it is not a magic message. It is just two things, guys. Get started and don't stop. You are allowed to have good days and bad days. You are allowed to just go home and lay down and curl up in a ball, okay? I have had sleepless nights worrying. There's just some things that I just struggle with and I probably always will. But the bottom line is I haven't quit and I am still here. Where would I have been? 
when I had my phone ringing for firewood and I hadn't a stick to sell. If I had just said the heck with it, I'm going back to the cubicle. Where would I have been? I would have never had this beautiful wood yard. I would never be on the eve of this big open house where we can all come out here and celebrate. None of that would have happened. I didn't quit, I kept going. And to be honest with you guys, I don't know if I ever felt I had it in me. Yeah. I've said before, I am nothing special, guys. I'm just a simple guy from Ohio. I'm not even a workaholic. I've always wanted to do a good job. Uh, I've always wanted to be successful, but to me, work wasn't what defined me. I don't know if I'm explaining this right. I just needed to have a career where I could keep the house and keep food on the table and gas in the gas tank. Um, I wanted to provide, right? And uh, it didn't matter to me if I was uh, making hamburgers or if I was moving decimal points on a spreadsheet. You know, whatever it was, it was good enough for me. I had no idea what awaited me and I had no idea I had it in me. But it was like I was that kid that threw his hat over the wall, you know? And once you did that, you gotta go, man. There's no other way to get out of this. You are now fully committed. And now thinking back upon it, what put me in this mode of not stopping and not quitting, uh, it was filing that paperwork with the state because now, you know, it's, it's on the record. I exist, I gotta do a tax return and there's no hiding from that. I really do think the other thing that has sustained me through all of this was I didn't want to embarrass my wife. I didn't want to embarrass my kids. Um, I still remember I was telling my one friend uh, about my plan, you know, of um, I was I had stepped away from my career to take care of dad. And I had this idea with my side hustle of turning this into a full time career. I still remember that grin uh, that my friend gave me where, uh, you know, they don't have to say it, but you know what they're thinking. And I still think of that. I thought, you know what? I got a lot on the line here. You know, okay. I, yes, I got to keep the house, but I don't want to embarrass my family. I don't want to um, embarrass my wife because my wife has played a huge role in this. All she had to have done was say, you know what, Joe? I think you need to go back to the cubicle because um, I don't know if we can take on this level of risk right now. Uh, with our kids going into college, but she didn't, and here I am. Um, never underestimate the influence that you have as a spouse and the effects that you have on others around you guys. Another lesson learned. So that's it, guys. It's practical. There's nothing magical. There's nothing inspirational, in my opinion. This is just um, the way it is for me. There were two things that has put me where I am right now. It is not because of a 27 point plan. It is not because my mission statement meshed perfectly with my goals. Guys, it is because of two things. I got started and I didn't quit. And if I can do it, so can you. I really do think that that's the secret to success. If you want to start a business, but not only that, you know, if you need to repair a relationship with a spouse or a relative, get it fixed. And if you can't get it fixed, well, at least you tried, you know? And then uh, at least you can move on now and sleep well at night. The whole thing though, guys, is we sit around, we worry, we plan, we uh, wanna have everything perfect before we start. And I'm just saying, there's nothing gonna be perfect and nothing will ever be perfect. But what can happen is if you get started, you will be able to figure it out and you keep going. I uh, want to really thank everyone for what you've done to help put Ohio Woodburner where it is right now. I would be nothing without you guys. That's how important you are to me. And I really do hope that if you can make the open house that we can all celebrate together. If you can't make the open house, we'll have some live streams for you. We can still uh, spend some time together, guys. All right. I hope everyone has a great day.